Hello, and welcome to the December 12th edition of Cecil.tv. I'm your host, Rob Churnside, and we have several exciting guests tonight in our pre-holiday show. Our first guest is Jeff Case, a Cecil County resident who runs, not just around the block, not 5Ks, but 100 miles. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to be invited on your show. Well, I'm glad you ran over here. <laughs> well, I drove over here uh, this evening, but uh, it's uh, nice to come check out the studio and, and participate in the you're community. You're Natalie attired as well. <laughs> yep, one of my favorite shirts. I'll tell you what, I can't even wrap my mind around 100 miles. How did you ever get into running 100 miles in one pop? Well, the journey started about eight and a half years ago when um, I quit drinking, I got into recovery, and immediately gained about 60 pounds. And about two years ago, I got a no notification from uh, my high school out in Michigan that I had been inducted into our, the uh, Athletic Hall of Fame for my cross-country career in high school. Well, I hadn't run in 35 years, so uh, I realized uh, I can't show up to this event larger than a house and get winded walking three steps onto the stage. So I set about to start running and then my knees started bothering me. So I bought a bike and I spent the next eight months riding my bike, losing the weight. Went out to the Hall of Fame induction with about 60 pounds lost and came back and about a year ago Decided to see if my knees would hold up any better with the loss of weight, and, and they did. And so, awesome. Uh, last uh, November 1st, I ran a 5K. I, that went pretty well, and so I thought, well, now what? And I saw that there was a 50 mile race on New Year's Eve. So I had eight weeks to get ready for that, so I set to business, did the 50 miler. Crossed that finish line, looked at the race director, and I said, well, that didn't hurt nearly as bad as I thought. And, Unbelievable. Uh, How long did 50 miles take? Uh, I finished that in uh, eight hours and 56 minutes, so just under nine hours. So New Year's Eve is pretty, the day length is pretty short, so you must have spent some time running in the dark. Actually, that race uh, was run in conjunction with a 100-mile race that they started at 8 o'clock in the morning. So they... They set us 50 milers out at 8 p.m. to kind of help the 100 milers. Uh, we were almost like pacers for the 100 milers. So the entire race, uh, my entire race was run, run at nighttime. Oh, man. Yeah. And where was this? This is in Alcoa, Tennessee. So, um, there's, um, and I've since learned that there's a handful of towns across the country named Alcoa because when the aluminum Company sets up a plant. They name the surrounding town Alcoa. I remember Alcoa. They had a TV show at there. They sponsored TV shows back in the day. Yes. So 50 miles, New Year's Day, eight weeks, and then within the course of a year, you ran your 100 mile. When was that? I ran the 100 mile uh, exactly a month ago today on November 12th. And, and where was that? That was in uh, Vienna, Illinois, which is just across the Ohio River from Paducah, Kentucky. That sounds kind of hilly too. Actually, it was a it was a pretty flat pretty flat course. Um, it was uh, I'd done some research and it it was uh, billed as a, a good introduction to the hundred mile distance. Uh, not a, not a real technical course. Um, granted, the the distance in and of itself is always going to be a challenge. So you trained for a year. How many pairs of sneakers for, in, did you run through in the course of that year? Uh, three pairs of sneakers. Yeah. Yeah. So I had uh, brought on a, uh, I'd, I'd taken on a coach in, in May, uh, a fellow by the name of Jeffrey Klein out in Portland, Oregon. And he had asked me what my goals were. And I said, well, I'd like to, I'd like to qualify for the Senior Olympics in the 5 and the 10K distance and also complete a 100-mile race. And he was fascinated with goals that were so far apart in distances and said, all right, well, let's, uh, let's get down to working on that. So he was able to get me qualified. Um, well, I did the running, 
but uh, in the for the senior Olympics in both the five and the 10k distance, I'm actually currently the uh, state of Maryland 10,000 meter uh, state champion for uh, the 50 to 54 year old uh, age group. Excellent. And uh, I'll be heading to uh, Birmingham, Alabama next June for the Senior Olympics. So that all went down in September, and it did not leave us a whole lot of time to get ready for the 100-mile race on November 12th. So you, with this busy race schedule, you probably have a lot of sponsors like Nike, and you quit your job and everything. Um, I wish I had sponsors. If uh, anyone's out there and uh, wants to take me up, uh, you can... Uh, Get my information from the uh, from Cecil TV. Sure can. So, but uh, now currently I still have to stay employed as an electrical engineer to, to pay my race entry fees and and replace my well, tennis shoes. That was shoes. my next question. What kind <laughs> of electrical engineer? Yes, There's, that's pretty broad territory. Any specific? Um, I do computerized uh, heating and air conditioning controls for uh, large commercial and industrial facilities. So um, the skyscrapers up in Philadelphia control the chiller plants, their boilers, and then, you know, all the room controls as well. And it all comes back to one, one computer where the facility engineers can keep an eye on their, their building. So you have a lunch break at work. You don't train during your lunch break, do you? On occasion, I'll uh, go out for a, a five or six mile run at lunch. But normally I try to get my training in either before before work or after work. Um, the qualifying races for the Senior Olympics were all running at 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning, so I adjusted my training to the morning so that my body would be used to waking up and just running as hard as I can. Um, I have the Philadelphia Marathon now. When you run 100 miles, do you, how do you keep track? Do you have people coaching you? Um, as to where to go, where to make a left, or the trail's pretty well marked. They uh, they usually have aid stations every five to ten miles, and um, uh, you know you just stay on the trail and 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 uh, like I said, the aid stations are are laid out, so uh, you really can't get lost. And they um, give you food and drinks and things. Yeah, like yeah. And in case our viewers want to know, I didn't run the Philadelphia Marathon. I watched. So, <laughs> do you have a running partner? I uh, someone you run with, or I don't. I do most of my training by myself. However, I do have a partner that can usually make it about halfway around the block for me. Um, if you'd like to uh, meet him, Toby, come here, buddies. Come here, buddies. Come here. So, and this is Toby. He's made for television, does his own stunts and everything. Um, yeah, and I... Uh, Hi, Tom, you're a good dog. We also compete in dog agility, where you do the obstacle courses, where they jump over jumps, weave through the poles, climb over obstacles, go through tunnels. And uh, so he, he runs for short spurts, but he can't really hang with me for the, for the duration. No, but I, he sure is inspirational. <laughs> Jeff, thanks for sharing with us. Um, when is your next race? Toby. Um, <laughs> Toby, come here, buddies. Uh, my next race is New Year's Eve. I'm doing a 50-kilometer race in Alcoa, Tennessee. Uh, that's 31.1 miles. Um, and then when I'm finished that race, I will be um, supporting my friend Lucas as he does the 100-mile race that's run in conjunction with that. And so I'll be there to feed him uh, drinks and food, and I'll probably end up running the last 20 or 30 miles of his race with him to help awesome. him get across the finish line. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for representing Cecil County. Uh, thank you for having us. And uh, Toby? We have another guest coming on. Come on, buddy. Allison buddies. Donnelly will be interviewing Julia Swoboda. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Allison Donnelly, and I'm here with Julia Swoboda, who's a junior at Tomes School, um, and she is starting a new location of an organization called Wreaths Across America. Julia, tell us about yourself. Well, um, I'm a junior at the Tomes School, like he said, and uh, last year I went to Arlington National Cemetery on National Wreaths Across America Day, 
and um, I helped lay the wreaths on the graves of fallen veterans. Oh, cool. So uh, that really sparked my interest in Wreaths Across America. I hadn't really heard of it before, and uh, I decided that I really wanted to get involved because I just saw how much of an impact it made in the community and how important it was to serve our veterans here in Cecil County. How long ago did you start planning? Um, it was, well, I had to write a, uh, rec I had to write a request letter to the vestry at St. Mary Ann's, um, around May, I want to say. Oh, so six months ago. Yeah. And I'd been planning that I was going to do this, so I was trying to get all my ducks in a row, everything in order. Yeah. So what kind of, have you, you've had to do fundraising and, and a lot of coordination, right? Yeah, so um, I had to fill out all the paperwork first and get that all to Wreaths Across America to the corporate office, which is in Maine. And um, they are really responsive and really helpful with everything. But uh, I had to, we set up a shirt fundraiser, t-shirt fundraiser, but a lot of our uh, sponsorships, donations came from direct asks. So, a lot of the people at the church just donated money, and that's how we got our wreaths. Yeah, I'm sure it's it's a cause that resonates with a lot of people. It yeah, definitely. So when is your when is wreaths across America? It is Saturday, December seventeenth. So and anyone can volunteer and lay a wreath on a veteran's grave. So they can show up just the day yep. of. And it's at noon. We have a ceremony, and then following the ceremony, there's the laying of the wreaths. Awesome. Yep. That's very exciting. How how can we help you promote the, your event? Just getting the message out, you know, that it, it starts, the ceremony starts promptly at noon. We'll have a color guard and we'll lay our seven ceremonial wreaths um, for all the branches of the service and the prisoners of war and missing in action. So then we'll also have a few guest speakers before we actually go out and lay the wreaths on the graves of the veterans. That's so awesome. Yeah, really excited. So, um, what else are you involved in? Well, I'm involved in the VFW, so uh, I kind of knew I'm, I, it was kind of a good cause for me to uh, kind of help out with, and I, I really saw that at Arlington, definitely, that, I, that this needed to have attention brought to the topic, and that people, you know, that it's the first one in Cecil County, so mm -hmm. people, it would just be a good way to kind of start something new, that uh, people can come and lay the wreath on the grave. I'm also involved in National Honor Society and key club service organizations at my school. Nice. And I hear you're going to Nicaragua. Yes, I'm going to Nicaragua in January with my school to, um, with Promise in Sight to help uh, administer eye care to the people of Nicaragua. Cool. And you haven't been before? No, I've you? never been. This will be my first time. I'm yeah. very excited. You're going to have so much fun. And what are your future plans? So I hope to keep doing this. And there's a girl next year who goes to St. Mary Ann's Church, and she's going to kind of work with me next year because I'll be a senior, and she hopes to take it over the year after. So I'm really Very excited good. for that. And we have 177 wreaths out of the 60 we hoped to raise. Wow. Well, now that number's up to around 75 graves, so we'll have around 75 wreaths to place mm -hmm. on the graves, and we have 177 that we've raised so far, so she should be a good fit into the next few years. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. And, thank you for having um, me. We will definitely help you. Uh, we'll share the event on Facebook so all of our listeners or viewers can, can check it out themselves. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello again. And here we are for the Discover Cecil segment of Cecil.tv with David Wells, a keyboardist and singer and songwriter from Cecil County. David, welcome to Cecil.tv. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. It's our pleasure. You're going to play some music for us in a little bit, and uh, that'll be good. Why don't you tell our viewers how you got started playing keyboards? Well, I was three years old, and Mom bought a little air blower organ. It only had two volumes, loud and louder. And... Uh, that's how I basically got my start. I played, started out with little kids songs and I gradually moved up from there. And I've never read a, never read a sheet of music in my life. I just uh, basically played it by ear. I would think David, our viewers might not know, but you're blind, so I doubt you could 
read sheet music unless it would be they braille, have, braille they, sheet music, right? They, they do have it in braille, but um, that presents a whole new set of challenges trying to read that and then play. play yeah, uh, right. You'd have to play with yeah, one hand, right? Yeah, pretty much. And Or memorize what you just read. Right. And I would guess memorizing is the way you go. Yeah. So you started at three years old, mm -hmm. playing keyboards and singing kids songs, and it evolved into, I've known you for many years, so I know what you play, but our viewers don't. Well, <clears throat> what it evolved into is a lot of uh, 50s, 60s, um, 40s music. It, it, it evolved into a lot of... Uh, classical music and and it also uh, classic country I play as well so and it's always very well received um, you play a lot for places where there are people much older than yourself yeah correct? I play I play for a lot of geriatrics um, geriatric patients and, and people in nursing homes and um, make a small living at it but you know that the the reason I do it is not because of the money although that helps but um, the reason I do it also is just to be able to put some joy in their lives as well and you feel like you've been paid a million bucks when you walk out of there so the joy resonates with you mm -hmm. that, that's pretty <clears throat> cool and you make a little bit of money um, I should add that I know that you're supported by you and your lovely wife, Jackie. Yes. Live in an apartment supported by Bayside Community Network, which is a Cecil County agency. Yes. That they also have people who help you arrange your gigs and go to your gigs, correct? How does that work? Um, what, ha what happens is uh, there there's a person that takes me on the gig. Um, they provide the transportation for me to get there, and they assist me in getting getting into the building and and they help me set up and then they just um, walk out of the picture until I'm done and then pick me back up and take me back to so, my apartment. So where are some of these geriatric facilities? Uh, I play for Elkton Transitional. Um, I also play for Singerly Manor. I play for Harford Community College Adult Daycare Center, and a few others. Well, that's great. That's great. So, you you play for these different facilities, and you have an apartment, a supported apartment, I might add, mm -hmm. with people to help you and your wife. Mm -hmm. um, what are your plans for the future? Excuse me. What are you? I'm sorry. What, David? Are your plans for the future? My plans for the future are basically to just keep doing what I'm doing. I mean, it, it, <clears throat> when you find something you love to do, you never work a day in your life. So I'm looking in Webster's Dictionary. I'm looking up living the dream. You're pretty much living the dream. I'm living man. my dream. Amen. Amen. I'm living my dream. I'm not killing the world, but I'm living my dream. And there's many a musician out there that would love to play music full time, such as you are. And uh, it's rewarding for you mm -hmm. and for the people listening. You have a selection you're going to play for us tonight? Yes, it's going to be a, an original number. Um, I don't write very many pieces, but um, this one, I, I thought it, it kind of represents what it is that I do play. So, so it's in the style of the music that you play? Yeah, the style, style is kind of a lot of... Um, uh, sort of 50-ish, 60-ish type of music. Uncomplicated music. <laughs> when life was less complicated. Yes, yes. yes. That's, uh, that's so, so true. And we look forward to hearing you coming up real soon. Mm -hmm. And folks out there in TV land, you're going to check out the way Dave's hands are set, the way he plays, because he has a very unique style. David... Thank you for coming on Cecil.tv and the Discover Cecil segment. We look forward to hearing you play. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't call me. Don't write me. Don't come 
to my door Don't say how much you love me I've heard that line before I'm tired of you fooling around Tired of you fooling around When I first met you I thought we had a love 